Hey what is going on everyone, this is Wicked and after a long period of time, while I was off searching for a new ROM, I found out that CM14.1 based on Android Nougat 7.1 was released and it is available for our Samsung Galaxy S4. So far so good. Yesterday I decided to test it, but I couldn't get it booted up on my device and I think that was because of the open gaps I flashed or maybe it was something wrong with the ROM itself, I don't know. What I'm sure of is that tonight I'm gonna be testing out Seer Droid version 1.1 based on CM14.1. And as always, a little disclaimer before we proceed to the flashing tutorial and the main overview of this ROM. The ROM I'm gonna be showing you is not stable, not even close. It has lots of bugs starting from the biggest one. Camera isn't even starting. Some settings don't work. I have received some random reboots during my testing and the list can continue. I'm here to give you my honest impression about the new 7.1 for Samsung Galaxy S4. To be honest, I think that our device is getting older and older and by every update it starts to get worse. Devs are moving away, getting new devices to work on and that's really normal. The Galaxy S4 is getting really old and I will and will no longer have such a big support. Enough with the talking, let's get into the review itself. So if you're looking for a stable ROM, you may check out many of my other videos to see which one you like best. Until then, let's get into the flashing part. As always, you'll need to get into recovery. Team Win Recovery Project to be more precise. I highly recommend making a backup on your external SD card. It is most likely not to like this ROM because of the box, so be safe if you have your current configuration and you'll be able to restore it afterwards. Wipe your device before flashing any kind of ROM, except updates. There you can negotiate with yourself. After you wipe your device, go and click install and select SearDroid.zip. Wait for the installation to finish, then flash the open gaps package. After everything is ready, click reboot and let's check out the boot animation from Sear Droid ROM. This time I was able to get 7.1 running great on my device. The first thing you'll notice is the new welcome menu from Google. Vision settings, still call settings, app to force close, the first bug I found even on 7.0. After I entered my Wi-Fi password, my account and set up my device, I decided to install Pixel Launcher since that's the most important modification 7.1 came with. It's something new. I played a little bit with it and it behaved pretty well and I had to really use SearDroid Launcher for the rest of my video. This is a great launcher and I hadn't had a problem with it. Good job, Sir Droid. Now, let's get into the main overview of this ROM. As always, I'll put the smoothness, performance and stability to the test and to be honest, from the beginning, none of them were giving up their best in this process. I felt the phone weak from the beginning. That doesn't mean it is laggy or something, but the box I encountered really pissed me off. I'm not blaming Sir Droid devs for that. The device is getting really old and the ROM is still in a very early stage of development. Even CM14.1 is in alpha stage and that's why I prefer keeping my mouth shut and show you what does this ROM comes with at its best. Speaking about stability, sensors are working perfectly, I would say, and as you may see from the sensor test, they are. As always, I put the ROM to the test in terms of performance in Antutu benchmark and the score it got was 31,205 points, which is not that bad. Running Alta's adventure wasn't pretty smooth, it was rather laggy, but uh, that may tell us that the game isn't really optimized for this version of Android yet, we'll have to wait. Overall, I would say that this ROM is fast, but not so close to what I expected. 
The most interesting feature this ROM comes with is the ability to customize most of the settings. Stats bar tweaks, toggles, miscellaneous tweaks and so on and so forth. The biggest problem which occurs again is that not all of them work as they should be. There are a bunch of categories where you can select what to modify slash customize as you want and as you can see in the following moments. The ROM doesn't come by default with root access, so you'll have to activate it from developer options. Afterwards, all the apps including Addaway should recognize it. I really appreciate that they fixed this bug from the previous build. Thumbs up for Seer Droid maintainers. I know that a lot of you guys will ask me about the battery life of this ROM. Frankly, I'm really sorry for that, I don't really have the time to properly test it, but compared to my main ROM, KitKat Warnum Lite, I feel that it eats the battery faster. You can see that by skipping from the beginning of the video to the end of it and notice the battery percentage drop. Either way, I'm waiting for a new version soon with big stability improvements, because this ROM has got potential and CM14.1 has a bright horizon ahead. Let's hope the best. As always, if you like my video, please make sure to thumbs up and subscribe right down to my channel. By doing so, you'll keep me motivating doing this kind of stuff. Until next time, take care. Wicked is out. Bye bye.